Hi class, so here I'm going to be looking at this idea of specific heat capacity and thermal capacity and then discuss these other things on the curriculum, this 3.22, 3.23 and we may get on to the next one. Okay, so you need to know these definitions. Uh, the difference between thermal capacity and specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity is the energy required per unit mass to raise the temperature by one Kelvin. So the unit for this would be a joule per kilogram uh, per Kelvin. Now the thermal capacity is actually looking at a specific object. So you may find the specific heat capacity of a pair of scissors for instance. So it is just the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of a substance by one kilogram, uh, sorry by one Kelvin. Um, we are not looking at per kilogram or per mass. So the unit for this is a joule per Kelvin. Okay, now I have um, with other videos and so forth done a number of problems uh, using, using the formula, using specific heat capacity and uh, thermal capacity. Um, remember that your, your formula that you're going to be dealing with here is that the heat is equal to mc change in temperature. Uh, that is when you're dealing with over here, this is the specific heat capacity. So the C is the specific heat capacity. Um, if you were de dealing with um, the thermal capacity, your Q would equal big C uh, change in T. So we don't need to worry about the, the mass that is included in that big C. So this over here is just the, um, is just the thermal capacity over there. All right, I hope that uh, makes sense. Please look at the other videos to look at specific examples of using those. All right, now I want to go on to explain the physical differences between a solid, liquid, and a gaseous phase in terms of molecular structure and particle motion. And to do this, I want to use this, this app over here, the simulation. We've seen these before. Uh, these are from the FET site. Now, here I've got oxygen. See, I've got oxygen here. And uh, it's at a very low temperature. It's a solid. Now, notice that in a solid, you have got the particles are vibrational. The movement is vibrational. So you've got your movement as vibration. They're just moving to and fro like that, or maybe up and down like that. But there's a vibrational motion, and there is a fixed structure. The, there is like a crystalline structure that is taking place. Now, as I increase the heat, as I make it warmer, uh, you'll see here it would go into something like, like that probably. This would be the liquid phase. So now there is, there is both vibrational and also there is some rotational movement. But generally there is not too much translational movement. Translational movement is when things move in a certain direction. Here we may have some rotational movement and some vibrational movement to and fro. Um, Notice, let me cool this down a bit, it uh, it's, uh, seems to be a bit hot, let's, uh, let's cool this down, um, it's like that. Um, so the particles are moving in relation to each other, they're not in a fixed crystalline state. Now as I continue to increase it, as I increase it here, um, what's happening here is that the particles are starting to separate completely from one another, they're going into a gas. Um, and now you'll find that um, you get your movement. Uh, they separate it from each other. The movement is translational. Uh, the particles are actually moving to and fro. Uh, there may be some rotational movement, obviously, and maybe um, also some vibrational movement at times. Here, the, the particles have separated completely, so the potential energy has increased. As we have increased the temperature, the potential energy uh, has has increased. 